Okay, so this is part two of that question. So you just want to pause here for a moment just so you can take down the measurements and that from the question, there's no problem. But basically what's being told here is that it's a telescopic loader, okay? And you're told that during the movement of circle K to the right-hand side for one full revolution, okay? AB moves up horizontal, up this angle, pardon the horizontal, it moves up this angle, but BC stays in the same position. So basically it's sliding up to D and BC stays in the same position, okay? As the circle K goes to the right hand one uh, movement. And then for part two of the question, the loader stops quickly. Something is on C by the time it gets over here and it falls with a parabolic shape down to P. That's a brief explanation. If you just pause the video, you'll be able to read it properly and you'll see yourselves and get the measurements from it. Okay, now I've gone ahead and set up the question. And I'm just going to highlight some of my lines that are a bit darker. So this is ABD. And this is BC at the moment. Okay, um, this is circuit K, which we're told in the question, and I still have to get point P for part two of the question, which is over here, but I'm just gonna put it down now for the moment. It's 180 mil over. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the circle K into 12 equal parts so that I can turn the circumference of K into a straight line using my compass. So I'm going to divide this up with my 3060. That's done. I take one of those segments on my compass and I'm going to step that off 12 times to the right. I just need to check and see, does it say one full revolution or half a revolution? Apologies, it only says half a revolution in the description. So I don't need to go 12 parts, I just need to go six. So this is the zero, the start, then we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's the half the circumference of the circle, approximately, put down as a line. So I'm going to bring up them center points, all straight up with my pencil. And what I'm doing is I'm mapping where the center of K would be as each point hits the ground. Okay, so this question, came up on the 2020 paper, it's very similar to that, where we had a digger and a loader were working backwards, and I think the loader bucket was rising as it reversed. This is more or less the same concept. So the temptation here in this question is to plot the locus of circle K, which would be incorrect. All you have to plot is exactly what I have now, where the center of that circle would be as one sixth of the revolution happens throughout the movement, okay? Now once that setup is done, you need to get your tracing paper, and I'm going to trace circle K, and I'm going to trace A, B, C, and D. But before I do that, I have to do a little bit of division of lines. So I need to divide the line B, D into six equal parts. So I'm getting, line division going now. So I'm just going to come off any angle I like from the B we'll say. It could be from D either. I'm going to mark off six equal spaces. So I'm going to do six fives. So I've marked off six equal spaces. I'm going to join the last one to D or the opposite end of the line. And then I'm going to use sliding set squares, same angle, so use the principle of congruent triangles. And I'm going to bring them points back. And that divides the line into six equal parts. Okay, between B and D. 
Now we're ready to use the tracing paper. Get my tracing paper. And I just need to trace circle K, the line ABD, and the rest then I don't need to trace C. And you'll see why when I'm actually doing the answer. Now, make sure that you submit the tracing paper with the exam. And if you just ask the examiner for tracing paper, he or she will give you tracing paper, no problem. Okay? A lot of students think that you ha have to bring your own. You don't. It's provided for you on the day. You just need to ask for it. Okay. And I need to make sure I label the center of the circle, C. I'm also drawing on the line A, B, D. And I'm marking off the six points on the line BD. Done. Now, so this is where B, when it's at zero, this will be B1. Next one is B2, B3, B4, B5. And then D is the same as B6. Once you that trace to take up the tape, And all I have to do now is slide the center of the circle as far as the line directly above one. I get my compass and I'm going to punch through B1. I then slide across to position two. I punch through B2. I then go to position C, or apologies, number three. And I punch through B3. Now, to help with accuracy, Okay, and I should have said this a few minutes ago. It's handy on the tracing paper if you draw in the vertical line C to the south pole of the circle. It can help when you're sliding across the paper to make sure that you're in the right place. I'm at four now, so I'm gonna punch through B4. Then I'm at five next, I'm gonna punch through B5. And then finally I'm at six, I'm gonna punch through D or B6. Now, trace the paper gone. So I just need to get my marker now. So the first dot is B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. And from each of these, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And that horizontal line has to be the same length as BC. And then that finds the location of C's, which allows you to plot the locus. So I'm just going to draw in a series of horizontal lines from each of those B points. When I get my compass, I'm going to set it to CB. And I'm going to mark that then from B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. Now... Um, I wouldn't recommend that you learn this off by heart because it's not always going to be a straight line. So it should be more or less a straight line for the movement, okay, for this particular question. However, if you look at the 2020 paper, you'll realize that it's not a straight line for that one. So just be careful of that when it comes to setting this up. The reason why it's a straight line here is because of the movement is linear. So there's a linear reaction, okay? Linear, linear, linear reaction. But if you have a linear and a curvature happening, you're going to end up with a curvature reaction. So just be conscious of that, that it won't be joining with a ruler. So if you were to join them freehand by hand, it would be absolutely fine as well. So that's how I plot the locus of C. In the next video, I'm just going to complete the question showing the parabolic curve from C6 down to P.